Self-directed Coverdale versus the 529 plan. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's ad bits, I'm gonna discuss, should you set up a Coverdale 529 plan? What is it? What are they? What are the benefits? And how do they work? So these are two educational type saving plans that are very important, very good saving tools that don't get a lot of attention and should. So today's podcast, I wanted to put my tax lawyer hat on and uh, kind of go back to the basics and explain the difference between the Coverdale ESA and the uh, 529 plan, which we uh, all should be aware of if you have kids or not, because um, it's a nice way if you have family members that have kids that you, you can offer some assistance to uh, paying the high cost uh, of education, which in a perfect world, we wouldn't need these types of plans. Why? Um, you know, I give this example. I, I grew up in Canada. I went to you know a really good, really good school called McGill University, one of the best schools in Canada. And I think my dad, uh, this was in the mid '90s. I think we paid, I think it was like two thousand bucks a semester. And yeah, it's gone up a little bit. I, th I think it's still like six or seven thousand bucks a year um, versus you know, comparable school in, in the United States, obviously you're talking 70, $80,000 a year, which is just crazy. I mean, um, the only way we're going to remain the, the most powerful country in the world, the strongest economy and the most productive workforce is we have a very educated um, young workforce. And um, by limiting the people that can go to school and, and incurring all these costs, um, we may dissuade some people not to actually pursue what their um, you know, future um, you know, goals and, and realistically what, what they should be doing to uh, unfortunately, um, you know, choose a different route, which is less costly. So the Coverdale and ESA 529 plans, two good options to help uh, pay for this. So let's start with the Coverdale. Um, you know, IRA Financial does offer self-directed Coverdales. Coverdales can be self-directed. So you can actually put in up to 2000 bucks a year. Now it is a much smaller number than the 529 plan. 2000 bucks a year. It's only for people if you are single, make less than 110. Married couples, 220,000. So if you make more than those figures, you're, you're stuck in the 529 world, which I'll get to in a minute. Not going to be able to do Coverdale. Advantage of Coverdale um, is everyone get involved. If, if you have you know under that income set threshold, you can self-direct it, meaning you can do traditional investments, also alternatives. You have... Um, Anyone you can open the account for, they must be under 18. You can pay college tuition and expenses, also covering elementary and secondary, which is you know good. Um, contributions obviously grow tax rates, kind of like an, a Roth IRA. Um, that's kind of the main um, example I would compare a Coverdale to is a Roth IRA. The only thing is once uh, the money's there after 30, you got to basically pull it out. Okay. Um, pay tax on it ultimately if you're not using it for education uh, but it does grow tax-free the limitations obviously is it's a very small number you're limited to um the one nine the, the 110 or the the 220 the two thousand bucks a year is not a lot um the, the child can't be 18 and when they're 30 it's basically done but you can sell direct which is pretty cool um Obviously, it's not as popular as a, a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, but they're becoming more popular, more popular, um, and have been in the last five, six years. So that's something uh, called a Coverdell ESA that uh, IRA Financial offers. We're one of the few custodians in the country that allow you to do self directed Coverdells. 529, on the other hand, you cannot self direct. Okay. You have to basically invest in certain publicly traded, um, more traditional investments like ETFs, mutual funds offered by larger financial institutions. Um, there are no income level restrictions. So if you make a million, a hundred million or a dollar, everyone can do a 529. It's not tax deductible like a Coverdale, but there's generally no annual limitation. So there's a lifetime limitation of anywhere from like 350 to like 500, depending on your state. <clears throat> um, but generally it's about 350 to 500. Not tax deductible either, but the, inc the <coughs> account does grow tax-free as well. So it has the same uh, attributes and benefits as a Roth IRA or a Coverdale. The money you put in there is not tax deductible. It does grow tax free. Um, the nice thing now under Secure Act 2.0 is you can start pulling some of that money out if it's not used, kind of transfer a little bit to a Roth IRA. Not all of it, but a little. So it doesn't go to waste. 
Um, the other thing is there's no restrictions on age for beneficiary. Coverdale, they have to be under 18. Um, also, again, no income levels. Um, the It covers, again, uh, college tuition and expenses. But for elementary and secondary tuition, it doesn't cover, it just covers tuition. Okay, it doesn't cover expenses, which isn't a big deal because the biggest cost for elementary and secondary is the tuition. You know, unless you're going to boarding school, it, it's really just tuition. Um, some states do offer tax deductions for um, doing 529 state deductions, not federal tax deductions. Okay, so it's not, it only can impact your state tax uh, return, not your federal tax return. But the big thing is the deferral, right? Both these programs take advantage of the power of tax deferral. They let your money grow without tax, so it accumulates faster. And then obviously you got to use it for educational purposes. Um, you know, obviously, why would you do a 529? Well, you make more than the 110 or 220. You want to put away more than 2K a year. Um, you have beneficiaries over 18. Um, you don't want to be limited to the 30 uh, number, I meaning if someone wants to you know, go to medical school or keep studying past their 30s. I mean, I studied, I went to law school and I got a master's in tax law. So I was actually in school till like 26. But I have friends that are doctors that you know, didn't really uh, graduate and, and move off from their residency till like early 30s. Um, and obviously, you can't choose your investments, which some people don't care about, and others obviously do. Both are great plans. Um, the easiest way to decide what to do again is if you just want to do two grand, then the Coverdale is going to be fine. If you want to put away more money, then you're probably going to go to the 529, um, which is a great plan, even if you can't self direct. I, I do a 529. Uh, I've done Coverdale's. Um, it adds up, right? You just got to start early. Uh, it's a nice way for grandparents or uh, family members to make gifts to kids through 529 uh, plans. They can make contributions. They're not tax deductible. Most people will go up to the, the gift tax uh, exemption, about 17,000 um, bucks. If you go above that, um, you eat into your unified credit, uh, which now is like $12 million. But... Um, most people try to stay under the, the gift tax exemption of 17K in 2023. But again, you can go all the way up to 350 uh, plus, depending on the state and the total amount available for annual contributions. Uh, the amount can grow beyond that, but the number of contributions can't exceed the set state number, generally around 350 to 500. Um, the Secure Act 2.0, which was passed uh, in 2021, um, will uh, allow you to, to leak some of that to Roth IRA if not all the money is used, uh, but you can then transfer it to other beneficiaries too to use the school. And again, it could pay for college, elementary school, secondary school, just a great program, uh, really amazing programs. Uh, I wish there was ways to do it. You know, I've always had this, um, this solution uh, if I ever ran for president, which I, I guess I can't because I wasn't born in the United States. So I guess I can't ever run for president. So darn. But um, if I ever had the power, um, I would I would kind of, instead of giving people low income families, um, uh, essentially earned income credits um, that reduces their tax, I would take that money and, and put it either in a Roth IRA or some type of Coverdale, which can be used to pay for school. Um, which is, the, you know, a super, super large cost and really a barrier to a lot of lower income families to kind of move up the uh, wealth chain because of the cost of college. Some families are just like, hey, I can't get a scholarship. I can't afford 70,000 bucks. I don't want to put my family in debt of 280 grand for my kid to go to college. So he's going to go to a community college and work and Maybe this kid would be the next Albert Einstein, the next uh, you know, Picasso, or the next Elon Musk, and it never happened because they never got that chance, which which is so sad for being in the, the richest country in the world that we actually have barriers for our kids to go get higher education is so wrong, so sad. So we should fix that. Coverdell's and 529 plans help, but again, that's on us, right? The government does give, obviously we know student loans and there's uh, scholarships available, but listen, not everyone gets them. Some people peak later in life, their grades you know, weren't as high as they should, or they didn't understand the process for getting um, all these scholarships or for whatever reason, they just weren't able to get into the school, the right school that was really suited for their uh, goals and, and money was, was part of it. So if you, um, 
are in a lower income bracket, I get it. You're not going to be able to put away $17,000 a year for kids' school. Hopefully, you can put away $500 or $1,000 in over 10, 15 years. Maybe that twelve, fifteen thousand turns into thirty, forty thousand, which is you know helpful. Uh, or you just send your kids to Canada, <laughs> go to school, or, or Europe, where you can go to school for pretty much free. Um, that's something we can do a lot better on, um, and hopefully we will. So that's it. That's the difference between the self-directed Coverdale and, and not self-directed five twenty nine, where you cannot self-direct. Both plans are great, have amazing benefits. And if you have kids, you should definitely look into uh, one or both of these um, solutions. So hope you now you better understand what the Coverdale is, what the 529 is, how they work, tax benefits, what they can be used for, limitations, and obviously the, the enormous uh, advantages because of the power of the deferral. That's it. Thank you guys for um, listening. If you're watching on YouTube, really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. If you have questions, comments, feedback, let us let me know. I would love to hear from you. You can leave a question below, send in a question through uh, social media, info at IRA Financial, however you want to reach out to me, please do so. Otherwise, uh, I'll see everyone again next week. Have an amazing rest of your week and take care.